executive summary. I am writing the claim for anyone, even though he has no prior knowledge or familiarity with the project, project name, contractor, consultant, and client names, even though we all know about them. List of delay events without details, because details and depth are covered you know, later on as a part of the claim, clearly mentioned that such events prevented the project completion. Mention the delay analysis method, time impact analysis. You know, you write which delay analysis method you used and why. Why is very important. It is uh, common and, you know, maybe required by the contract. So it's a full stop. But not many contracts actually re recommend delay analysis methods. And there is now like a trend. So many people are calling to change that. Maybe you are not aware of it, but because I'm active in many communities, like advanced communities about delay analysis and contract administration, so they are talking about it, you know, like uh, they should, you know, if if a client, if we disagree about which method, don't come after one year, tell me I want to collapse it as built. If you want it, make it a part of the contract conditions. And for me as a contractor, before I build the project, I know that I should implement collapse it as built. I need four full-time planners, you know, to fulfill the client's requirements. But don't make the fight, you know, you initiate. Clients actually initiate the fights. Because, you know, normally say contractors are often very hard to deal with and they are not good listeners. No, you initiate the fight by not making the requirements clear. No one will even like talk to you or argue to you if you make your requirements clear, you know. So make it clear, you know, don't go to like pizza restaurant and ask for sushi. You know, this is my requirement, right? you go, you make your, your requirement clear. The restaurant will give you the menu. This is our requirement, you know, or whatever. Like it just, you know, it even works in real life, right? So you go to the restaurant, show me your menu. You are the client, you know, requirements are clear. You know, if you want to say something, I'm expecting, you know, some Indian food, for example, so they cannot tell you, okay, yeah, let's just sit and have, you know, a seat. Then they will, you will later on after 15 minutes, you will find out that, you know, they serve uh, like pizzas only, you know, you will be very angry, you know, so make your requirements clear, you know, present the claim findings in the executive summary. So the first page of the claim, you have to present the claim findings, EOT revised completion date. Don't wait for someone to wait for uh, like to read, you know, 300 pages, you know, and uh, see that you are asking for three months of extension of time and one million dollars of prolongation cost. Make it clear, you know, let the reviewer know what you are expecting from the claim. Relevant to contract clauses. Okay. And know your audience, you know, your claim to a consultant is different from a claim to the arbitrator, is different from a claim to the court. Because if you are submitting to a court, for example, or arbitrator, you have to mention, you know, the previous revisions of your claim and why it got rejected and what was your response and why you disagree with the engineer's decision or rejection. So we have to know your audience, you know, and if it's to the consultant, it's different, right? Cutoff date for the claim. So I am, for example, um, so I, I, I considered all facts and my update up to today's date, you know. So when someone later on after two months is reviewing the claim, he will say something, but they already got the approval of the submitter. Why they are, you know, making the submit or why they are still claiming for it. So you make it clear that it was up to this date. So he will know that, okay, so I issued the approval after this date, so they did not consider it.